again, Mark here from TalkingBase.net. This week, I'm going to take a quick break from all the spelling drills and scales and stuff and uh, have a look at some good old thumb technique, specifically the difference between the more traditional slap bounce and the more Victor Wootney style of rest stroke. So when you first start to learn how to play slap bass, the first step is usually to learn how to bounce the thumb on the string. And this is the traditional way of learning how to get that popular slap sound. We rotate the lower forearm and wrist and literally bounce with the thumb. And this makes the string strike against the frets and it gives us that nice slap chime like this. Now, if you want to learn a little more about that type of thumb slap, then I've got several lessons devoted to it on YouTube, and I'll link to those in the info below. In this lesson, I won't be lingering on the bounce technique, so if you want a beginner's primer, just follow that link. So, as I said, the thumb bounce is the most popular way of slapping the string, and you can hit it from any angle. So, you can strike it with the thumb pointing up, like this, with the thumb kind of parallel to the strings, like that, or more like flea with the thumb pointing down, like this. Either way, doesn't matter as long as you're bouncing the thumb on the string, so we're bouncing, you know, off it so the thumb goes down and back. If you're doing that, then you're bouncing the thumb. Now, you may or may not be aware that there's also another way to slap the string, and that's by using what I'm gonna call rest stroke. So that's like the standard finger picking method. To perform a rest stroke slap, you slap down through the string with the thumb, but you don't bounce off. You slap through and you come to rest on the next string. So, as an example, here I'll just slap an open E string with rest stroke, okay? So, so you can see there that the thumb slaps through and comes to rest on the A string. Or you could think of that as it coming to rest on the fretboard either way, but the idea is that we're slapping through the string as opposed to bouncing off the string. So there's a bounce and here's the rest stroke. Okay. Now on the face of it, these two techniques sound pretty similar. So uh, just as a comparison, here's the first five notes of a G major scale played up and down. And first of all, we'll try with, uh, with the bounce. Okay. Okay. And now with rest stroke. Okay, so they sound pretty similar. But uh, after playing with, around with these two techniques for a while, you'll find that the rest stroke has a little bit more body to the sound. It's a little bit more bassy. And it's uh, naturally got a little bit more volume to it. There's a bit more power in there. Uh, and that's because pretty much... Um, well, it's pretty similar to, uh, let's say, boxing or martial arts, where if you punch through a target, you'll get more power than if you pull your punch, you know, if you recoil. And, um, you know, it's very similar to that. So with the bounce, we're bouncing off. With the uh, rest stroke, we're pushing through and we're getting more power in there. So the bounce is better for a kind of bouncy kind of sound and the rest stroke, we've got a little bit more body and volume. One of the most popular exponents of this thumb bounce style is Mark King from Level 42. And it's perfectly suited to playing those kind of percussive, incessant lines that, that he plays in songs like Love Games. The rest stroke is used by people like Victor Wooten, Marcus Miller, and Les Claypool. If you check out any of Marcus Miller's live videos, you'll see his thumb coming down on the neck in a very direct way. And it comes down and it stays down. Now I recently released a video lesson covering his bass line from Run For Cover, which is a really good example of this kind of playing. Now, each technique has its own pros and cons. The bounce technique works great for those Mark King kind of lines that I mentioned. You really feel like you're playing more in the style of a drummer with both hands kind of working in this kind of way. Also, the bounce is probably easier to get used to at first. The action of the thumb is probably more straightforward in rest stroke, but you have to be a lot more controlled when you come down to rest. One of the biggest advantages to the bounce technique is the initial speed that we can get with the thumb. When we bounce the, uh, the thumb off the string, it bounces back into position, ready to come back down. When we play rest stroke, when we pluck through the string there, we're staying down. So we have to physically bring the thumb back up to come back down. So we're, you know, we're having to use two 
um, two motions in each hit, okay? Whereas bounce, it just bounces and comes back and we're ready, okay? So you can see this if you were to just play three notes, one after another, like that. With the bounce, it's easy. With the rest stroke, not so easy. You know, you literally have to almost punch down on the, on the bass, you know, and your hand is kind of doing this kind of motion. So for that kind of playing, the bounce is a lot, lot better. A really good example of this speedy kind of bounce is the song Lessons in Love by Level 42. So again, it's Mark King. And uh, the bass line sounds like this. Okay, so that's the riff, and uh, you know, it's a pretty quick riff, uh, even with that kind of bouncy slap. But if you try it with rest stroke, it just, it just doesn't feel right. It just, uh, you know, it's very tough to do. So, you know, we would have something like this. You know, even if you can get the speed up, it just doesn't feel natural. It just doesn't suit it, because the, the hand is coming in like this. very stiff and very rigid whereas with the bounce very loose very free so on the face of it the bounce looks like a better option all around but we're only looking at half the story the rest stroke has a few plus sides to it that have catapulted its popularity over the last 10 years or so and made it the slap technique for all the modern virtuosos. The most important bonus that you get from using rest stroke is the ability to play the double thumb technique. Rest stroke is the foundation of double thumbing and for those of you that don't know what double thumbing is, just check out any online videos of Victor Wooten. Victor is the master of this technique which involves getting two notes out of one traditional slap motion. So to double thumb, we slap down into rest stroke, so here I'm playing a G, so there's the rest stroke, but then we bring the thumb back up in an upstroke to catch the, th uh, the string on the return. So. Instead of just, that, just, uh, just getting that one note with the, that uh, rest stroke action, we get two. So we've got a down stroke and an up stroke. Okay? Which is a little bit more like a plectrum action, but using the thumb in slapping motion. This technique is used to play really, really fast slap lines, far beyond the speed of any of the regular bounce uh, techniques. So a line like this can not only be made a lot easier with double thumbing like this, but it can also be played a lot faster. Okay, so a lot more speed there, just because we're getting two hits out of each motion. But double thumbing isn't just all about speed. It actually gives us a different kind of tone on those upstrokes, and it's very much a different approach to playing, um, you know, that can be seen as adding an extra string to the bow. Some lines that sound good bounced might not sound very good using double thumbing, so it's all about using the correct technique for the sound and feel that's required. Anyway, double thumbing is slightly outside the topic of this lesson, so I won't dwell on it too much. I've got some double thumb lessons coming up, so I'll cover, I'll cover that technique in more detail then. But back to rest strokes, and uh, we can see how the initial speed advantages from the bounce are negated when we use double thumbing. So in terms of pros and cons, we're on level terms. Now the next advantage to playing with the rest stroke comes in the shape of tone, most importantly in the upper register. Down here in the lower positions, the difference between bouncing and rest stroke, it can be heard, but it's not that obvious. But if we move up here above the 12th fret, it becomes much more noticeable. So if we play this 12th fret uh, here on the E string, and we play it bounced, and then we play it rest stroke, you can hear there that there's a lot more body to the sound. Now I mentioned that earlier, but what we get in there is we're getting more bottom end. What we're getting is more of the fundamental, because when we bounce, it's a little bit more like playing tapped harmonics, like... You know, we're getting more of the harmonics of the note, whereas when we uh, play through the string, it's more like finger picking and we're getting more of that fundamental. So, by playing rest stroke, we've got more 
bottom end of the note, so it's just a fatter sound up there. So, as an example, let's just try playing up through an E blues scale up here past the 12th fret, okay? So, uh, when you try this, make sure that you're amplified. Make sure that you're plugged into an amplifier, because otherwise you're not going to hear the difference, really. Uh, because a lot of the difference is based on the fundamental of the sound, which you're just not going to hear, you know, when it's acoustic. So, let's just go through those notes. So, I'll quickly run through them. And uh, remember that this is all transcribed in the lesson material, which you can download from uh, the link below. That takes you over to talkingbass.net. So, uh, you know, I'll just run through it quickly. And, uh, you know, if you have any problems, just download that. So, here are the notes. We've got E, 12th fret of the E string. Then G, 10th fret of the A string. Then we move up to A, 12th fret of the A string. A sharp, 13th fret of the A string, and then B, 14th fret of the A string. So the first five notes, E, G, A, A sharp, B. So, ten, oh, sorry, 12th fret E string, ten, and then on the A string, 10, 12, 13, 14, okay? So that's the first part. Then we move up to the 12th fret of the D string, for the D. Then we just repeat the first set of notes that we played down here, just up the octave. So we have E, 14th fret of the D string, then G, 12th fret of the G string, A, 14th fret of the G string, A sharp, 15th fret of the G string, and then B, 16th fret of the G string. So, E, G, A, A sharp, B, D, E, G, uh, A, <laughs> A sharp, B, and if we do it by fret, 12th fret of the E string, then on the A string, 10, 12, 13, 14, the D string, 12, 14, and then uh, the G string, 12, 14, 15, 16, okay? So, that's the E blues scale. So, first of all, let's try playing up through it with the bounce, okay? So... Now, the first thing that you'll probably notice is that when you get up onto the D and the G string, uh, especially the G string, the sound will start to thin out a little bit. So you'll start to lose a lot of bottom end and it just ends up sounding like but just very thin, okay? So uh, you'll, you know, you'll get a little bit of bottom end down on this E there. And then it all starts to die off. Now let's try with the rest stroke. Okay, so you immediately have a little bit more um, volume to each note and uh, there's a little bit more bottom end there all the way up. And because, as I mentioned before, we're getting more of the fundamental. When you, when you play with the thumb bouncing, it's more like playing um, uh, tapped harmonics. So if it was to, you know, that kind of thing. So what we're actually doing when we're playing up here is, we're kind of playing tapped harmonics. So that's why a lot of the fundamental is lost. Um, we're not getting, uh, well, we're just getting a lot of the harmonics. We also uh, get an inconsistency of tone too, because when we're playing those harmonics, because the thumb's pretty much straight, staying in the same place, but the length of the string is changing as the hand is moving up, we're getting different harmonics ringing out. So as we get up here, we're getting some kind of odd harmonics. You know, and it's just inconsistent. Sometimes they'll come out, sometimes they won't come out so well. Like I say, inconsistent. When we follow through, we're getting more of that fundamental which stays consistent. And that's why we get that consistency of tone. So, just try... Just try playing through that uh, E blues scale with both techniques and just get used to the two different sounds. So, what do we learn from all of this? Well, it's worth learning to play both ways. The bounce is great for getting a more percussive style of playing and for gaining overall speed with the downstroke. The rest stroke is better all round technique for getting a deeper tone and for developing the double thumb. If I'm playing a Mark King or a Flea line, I'll bounce. If I'm playing a Marcus Miller or a Victor Wooten style line, a rest stroke. Both have their own tonal characteristics and it all depends on what you're going for. You know, I see some people on YouTube saying that, you know, the rest stroke is the only way to truly stra uh, slap. And that's just not true. It all completely depends on the slap lines that you're going for, you know, and the kind of style that you've got. If you've only played with the bouncing thumb all this time, don't listen to other people that say you've got to stop playing like that, you know, and then, you know, learn this other way, you know, start from scratch again. That's completely wrong. 
you just add this technique to your bow. You know, they're both very different. It's not one or the other. You can bounce for some things and you can rest stroke for others, okay? So here's a quick riff that you can practice just to get used to this, uh, this rest stroke technique. So the riff sounds like this. So this riff starts with two hits on the open E string, okay? So we've got a hit on one, then we have a hit on uh, the and of two. So we have one, two, and. And you'll notice that I cut the note short by muting it on beat two. So one, two, and, okay? One, two, and, okay? So that's the first part. So now the next part we Play the C sharp there, we slap that, and then slide up to the D. Then we uh, pop the octave there at uh, the D at the seventh fret of the G string. So we've got fourth fret of the A string to the fifth fret of the A string, and then the seventh fret of the G string. So, all together. Now, in terms of the rest stroke, you'll notice that when I play the E there, I'm keeping the thumb down when I've played, so you can see it's a rest stroke, I'm not bouncing. That's with bounce, that's with rest stroke. And when we go for the C sharp to D, again I'm keeping the thumb held down. It's coming down onto the D string, so I, I slap the A string and you can see the thumb rests there on the D string. So that's the move. And uh, in terms of this hand, you know, the left hand there, I'm just using the first finger sliding up and then using the fourth finger for the octave. Okay, so first, uh, the first part. Now the second part of this riff is very similar to the first half because we start with the open E string on one and the end of two. But then we have two hammer-ons, so it sounds like this. Okay, so we're gonna slap the A there, so this is the fifth fret of the E string, hammer, and then hammer-on to the seven, uh, seventh fret of the E string, the B. So this is A to B, so a hammer-on there. So we only slap the A. And because we're using rest stroke, we slap down, and the thumb stays down while we do the hammer-on, okay? That's the rhythm. Then we slap the D there at the fifth fret of the A string, and then hammer on to the seventh fret, the E. So it's the same pattern as we just used on the uh, on the E string. So, and you have the choice of fingering on this hand. You can either use first finger to third finger or first finger to fourth finger. Doesn't really matter which. But the most important thing is with the rest stroke, to hold that thumb down, you know, slap through the E string and come to rest on the A string. Then when we slap the A string, we come to rest on the D string and that's it. So. Okay, so both riffs together. So you want to practice that riff round and round until you just get used to this rest stroke and it'll take a little bit of time to just get used to it because, you know, with, with the bounce, you know, if you use those kind of octave patterns, you get used to the thumb coming in and out, whereas with the, with the rest stroke, we've got a definite, you know, the thumb comes in and it stays down, you know, getting used to that thumb staying down there is the hard part. But you know, if you're gonna move on to anything like double thumbing, it's really useful, okay? So, just practice that riff round and round. So, I hope this video helps with understanding the rest stroke way of slapping. Remember to visit talkingbass.net for more videos on the lesson map and also subscribe for free to gain access to the members area where you'll find loads more bass resources. Just follow the link in the info below, okay?
See you later.